1769, the 28th of September, an entry made in a royal court ledger, a record of an historic event. And soon after, every word meticulously obscured, redacted. But why? Why was history so erased? Lieutenant Bailiff Charles Lompriere held dominion over Jersey. The Bailiff Lord Cartwright never visited the island, and the Governor, another absentee, one Colonel Ball. Colonel Ball? <laughs> it's no more idea than an oyster, and like that inert mollusk, only opens his mouth to take in fluids. Jersey's Parliament, the States, was at this time entirely subservient to the Royal Court, which consisted of Lompriere and 12 equally autocratic magistrates, or jurats. Amongst the jurats, you already have your father, your father-in-law, a cousin, another brother-in-law, and your brother Philippe as Attorney General. What next? Your Springer Spaniel Poodle Cross Rodley for Solicitor General? Don't be ridiculous. Rodney, he never does as he's told. Farming folk like Forry Lefebvre owed feudal landowners, or seigneurs, champar, a right to every twelfth sheaf of corn or bundle of flax. Rectors were also owed tithes. There were tithes on apples, too. Flory's husband Francis also owes rent, mortgage repayments paid in quarters of wheat, or sometimes in money, or sometimes paid in kind. Rodney! 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 Come to heel, hound, I shall have thee whipped! Here, my best layer she is. <coughs> oh, yes, very well. I shall have corn from now on, now that harvest is upon us. No more damn chickens. <laughs> Now the price is sky high. Now that L'Empire has lifted the export ban, so all the rich men can flog our wheat to the Frenchies and force the price of bread up. Dame Rumour hath it, you've lifted the export ban on corn. Well, for once, Dame Rumour is correct. But what of the implications? Implications? As rot are calculated at a fixed rate, according to the price of wheat. If the price goes down, so does the rich man's income. Therefore, dear bread means prosperity for the capitalist and starvation for the poor. Leg or breast? A mob of women raided a corn ship in the harbour, forced the sailors to unload her, sold the corn and the key, but with due honesty, paid the owners. Flory, this is Tom. Tom Grishy. Enchanted, Mum. You a troublemaker, Mr. Tom Grishy. That I am. Tom says common folk are preparing to march into town, with sticks and all, to storm the royal court. That they are. Thursday next, the 28th. St Martin's, St John, 300 from Trinity alone. Joining up with St Lawrence and St Saviour's. I predict a riot. We have demands and we will be heard. That the price of wheat be lowered and set at 20 sol a cabo. That his majesty's tides be lowered and set to 20 sous a virgin. That rectors can no longer charge tithes, except on apples. That seniors relinquish the right to receive every 12th sheet of corn or bundle of flax. That the seniors right to enjoy for a year and a day the revenue from the estates of all who have died without direct heirs be abolished. Banishment of all foreigners! We are for England, and we shall regain His Majesty the King and the Privy Council with the sorry details of our enforced exile upon this blasted rock. Enforced? The protesters left quietly and peaceably. One of them said thank you. Yeah, and the disrespect shown to the personage of His Majesty the King. They were disrespecting you, not His Majesty. Obviously, His 
Majesty, it will dispatch five companies of Royal Scots to restore order. Under the command of Colonel Bentinck, I shouldn't wonder. As for the ludicrous demands made by the mob, which you so diligently entered into the record, you will be ordered to equally diligently extinguish them. And all! This is exactly what transpired, and all recorded. The demands were struck from the record and troops dispatched. Lomfrey's plans backfired. When Colonel Bentinck and his men arrived in St. Helier, they were greeted by crowds on the quayside, like the liberating heroes of centuries later. Bentinck, very soon, smelt a rat. Tom Grushy continued his vocal opposition to Lomfrey and appeared in the royal court on many a trumped up charge until Bentinck was made governor in 1770 and real reform began. The Corn Riots and Bentick's Code of 1771 started Jersey on the road to reform, and a more equitable society, Lampierre's wings, began to be clipped. The law books, previously his own private preserve, were opened up to everyone. People should know the law, and they should know when they're breaking the law, making them less susceptible to the whims of judges. Most extraordinary. He resigned as Lieutenant Bailiff in 1781 and died at his seigneurial home, Roselle Manor, in 1806. Oh, Rodney. Rodney never returned. Our self-imposed exile to Elizabeth Castle and our meeting with His Majesty and the Privy Council are all in the Royal Court ledgers. But was my original record of the demands ever deciphered? Yes but not until the 20th century. They tried to use a police x-ray scanner at first, but the scribblings out had been made so soon after the original text was written, it didn't work. It was down to a team of ladies at the Société Jersiers, armed with magnifying glasses, who after many, many hours made out every single word. And as for Francis and Flory and Rodney, well, things gradually got better. You could say, we lived happily ever after. <laughs>